Welcome to Get Connected! Woo! It's great to have you all back, Kingdom Kids! As you know, we're looking at the series of King David. Exciting, right? Today, we're going to learn about trusting in God. I'm ready. Are you? Come join me. Let's go. Are you ready? Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for this new opportunity to come together in your presence. We pray, Heavenly Father, that our hearts are ready to receive all that you have prepared for us today. We thank you, God, for all that you have taught us so far. And we thank you for all that you have prepared for us next. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Trust the Lord. Our first power today comes from 1 Samuel chapter 17 verses 4 to 16. A champion named Goliath, who was from Gath, came out of the Philistine camp. His height was six cubits in a span and he had a bronze helmet on his head and wore a coat of scale armour of bronze weighing 500 shekels. On his legs he wore bronze geeves and a bronze javelin was slung on his back. His spear shaft was like a weaver's rod and its iron point weighed 600 shekels. His shield bearer went ahead of him. Goliath stood and shouted to the ranks of Israel, Why do you come out and line up for battle? Am I not a Philistine and are you not the servants of Saul? Choose a man and let him come down to me. If he is able to fight and kill me, we will become your subjects. But if I overcome him and kill him, you will become our subjects and serve us. Then the Philistine said, this day I defy the armies of Israel. Give me a man and let us fight each other. On hearing the Philistines' words, 
Saul and all the Israelites were dismayed and terrified. Now David was the son of an Ephraimite named Jesse, who was from Bethlehem in Judah. Jesse had eight sons and in Saul's time he was very old. Jesse's three eldest sons had followed Saul to the war. The firstborn was Eliab, the second Abinadab, and the third Shammah. David was the youngest. The three eldest followed Saul, but David went back and forth from Saul to tend his father's sheep in Bethlehem. For 40 days the Philistine came forward every morning and evening and took his stand. Hello Kingdom Kids everywhere. Today I want to share with you a special verse from the Bible and it comes from Jeremiah 17 and verse 7. This is what it says. But blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. And for me, this verse excites me because it is one of hope. It tells us that when we put our trust and confidence in the Lord, we are being blessed. God rewards his people when we trust him and obey him. He wants to bless us, trust and obey. Believe his word and obey his command. So, let us read this word again. Jeremiah 17, verse seven. But blessed is a man who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. So, as I say, the word for us today is trust and obey. And so I would like you today to pray and ask God to help you to trust and obey in all your ways. Today's power comes from 1 Samuel 17, 32 to 40. And it says, David said to Saul, let no one lose heart on account of this Philistine. Your servant will go and fight him. Saul replied, You are not able to go out against this Philistine and fight him. You are only a boy, and he has been a fighting man from his youth. But David said to Saul, Your servant has been keeping his father's sheep. When a lion or a bear came and carried off a sheep from the flock, I went after it, struck it, and rescued the sheep from its mouth. When it turned on me, I seized it by its hair, struck it, and killed it. Your servant has killed both the lion and the bear. This uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them, because he had defied the armies of the living God. The Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. Saul said to David, Go and the Lord be with you. Then Saul dressed David in his own tunic. He put a coat of armor on him and a bronze helmet on his head. David fastened on his sword over the tunic and tried walking around because he was not used to them. I cannot go in these, he said to Saul, because I am not used to them. So he took them off. Then he took his staff in his hand, chose five smooth stones from the stream, put them in the pouch of his shepherd's bag and with his sling in his hand approached the Philistine. Kingdom Jump 
and you've got to get your sticks to jump into your cup and let's see how many you can do in one minute. Are you ready 1982? Yes! Okay, let's go! Woo, woo, woo! Okay, Kingdom Kids, they have one minute to get their cups to stick to jump into their cups. Now remember Kingdom Kids, it's all down to you, you decide who the winner is. They've got to use one stick to jump the other stick into their cup. How many have they got so far? I'm not sure, but are you counting? Keep going, 92. Is it difficult, 1982, or is this easy peasy? This is difficult. Let us know. Okay, and you're coming up to 35 seconds now. Keep going, Kingdom um, 1982. Come on, Kingdom Kings. Kings. Oh, aim is better than mine, Kinder Kids. Oh, so close! Oh, that was a close one. Come on, 1982. Come we on, need Kinder some Kids. of those cups. sticks to jump into the cup. Kingdom Kids, come on, you help them. Cheer them on. Let's see if they can get this done. We've only got 10 seconds left now. Oh, come on, it's five. Very difficult. Very difficult. That is not easy, kids. That is not easy, Kingdom Kids. At all. Remember, Kingdom Kids, it's all down to you. You decide who the winner is. But you know what? Vote for 19. Come on, kids. Vote Come on, Kingdom 19. Kids. You got for fame, too. Vote for 19. 82. 82. 19. 82. 19. 82. Today's power comes from 1 Samuel 17, 41 to 50. Meanwhile, the Philistine, with his shield bearer in front of him, kept coming closer to David. He looked David over and saw that he was only a boy, ruddy and handsome, and he despised him. He said to David, am I a dog that you come at me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. Come here, he said, and I'll give your flesh to the birds of the air and the beasts of the fields. David said to the Philistine, You come against me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This day the Lord will hand you over to me, and I'll strike you down and cut off your head. Today I will give the carcasses of the Philistine army to the birds of the air and the beasts of the earth. And the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. All those gathered here will know that this is not by sword or spear, that the Lord saves. For the battle is the Lord's and he will give all of you into our hands. As the Philistine moved closer to attack him, David ran quickly towards the battle line to meet him. Reaching into his bag, and taking out a stone. He slung it and struck the Philistine on the forehead. The stone sank into his forehead and he fell face down on the ground. So David triumphed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone. Without a sword in his hand, he struck down the Philistine and killed him. Big is a word we use every day and we use it to compare one thing with another. We've made this lovely crown here for the Coronation Street Party. And it's what I would describe as BIG! Look at the size of it! It's enormous compared to a crown that you wear on your own head. Yeah, I've got one here, look. <laughs> we want people to notice and when they see it and say, wow, that's big! We're continuing our series on King David from God's big book, the Bible. Here it is. Hey, I hear you say, that's not a big book. Sure, you're right there in terms of the physical size. It's not a particularly big one. But the information and instruction inside it is big. Very big. And we have to read it every day so that God can speak to us through it. 
Is that all right? Make sure you do it. Make sure that you listen to carefully during the power section of Get Connected. It's the time when the Word of God, the Scripture, is read. What's God going to say to us today as we look at 1 Samuel 17, verses 4 to 16, and verses 32 to 50? It's all about King David and a very familiar passage where he has a big challenge. Challenge is put to him by Goliath. Yes, Goliath, can you see him? You guessed it, he was a very big guy. Just look at the size and a big spear and a javelin. He's got a sword too. Wow, a dangerous customer, that Goliath. Goliath was the champion soldier from the Philistine camp. The Philistines were God's enemies and wanted to rule over God's people, Israel. Everyone was scared. <laughs> when Goliath challenged King Saul and all Israel to find one who would fight him single-handedly in battle. Goliath would fight one-to-one -one against one person from Israel's ranks. And a winner takes all. Winner takes all. Mm. Have you experienced a time when you've been so scared or frightened about the challenge that is to come in the future? God's word in Romans 8.31 tells us to be more than conquerors. He says these words, listen carefully, to what God has to say. What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Those words are from God, not from me, they're from his book. God calls us to be more than conquerors. Brilliant. I like it. I'm going to trust God. King Saul didn't understand that David could defeat Goliath. Okay? David could defeat Goliath. Oh, I hope he could do it. He said, you're young. You're only young and Goliath is a lot older than you. And he's more experienced. This is what he was saying to David, you're not big enough. He was only looking at David's physical appearance and his youthfulness. But David was big in God's eyes. God saw the inside of David, his heart. A man after his own heart, he says in Acts 13, verse 22. And God also says about David, he will do everything I want him to do. Mm, David knew that God would be with him if he trusted him in the battle. We have to take God's word seriously and trust in God and do what he says in his word. David was such a man and his testimony was that when he was younger, God helped him to battle with a lion and a bear and he saw no reason why God would not help him against Goliath. That same big God would rescue him from the hand of the Philistine giant. King Saul showed concern for David and wanted him to be victorious in the battlefield. So he dressed him in armour with a sword but that wasn't what David was used to, so he couldn't wear it. He took it off. He couldn't wear it. We have to be used to wearing the armour of God. In Ephesians 6, it tells us all about the armour. To know that it fits perfectly on everyone who chooses to put it on. And get connected, we did a whole series on the armour of God. Go back and look at it. Look at it again, it's good stuff. Who was David going to win the battle? By trusting God, so that all around would see. It was God standing with him as the battle was being fought. His weapon was a slingshot and small stones from the stream. 
seemed to be too little, but remember, our big god was there with him, and victory was certain. Put your trust in God. Start when you're young like David was. And it will be as it was for him, the enemy defeated. Amen. Got him! Hey! We've got so much to give God thanks for. Before we start praying and thanking God, I want to share with you my prayer stones. Because we're going to use these as we pray today. And they're just normal stones that I found around. And I've decorated them. I've written on them. This one says, trust God. This one's got flowers on. And on this one, I've written our cable tie for this week, Jeremiah 17, 7. And every time I pick this up to pray, I can be reminded of our cable tie. It gives me something to hold as I talk to God. Are you ready? We're gonna give God thanks for all that he has taught us today and for that and that we are able to trust in him always. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, almighty God, we thank you for all you have taught us today. Thank you, Heavenly Father, that we can trust in you always. You never fail us, almighty God, and you do not change. You are the one in whom we can trust in always. And we thank you, Father God, that you stand with us. You stand with us against the enemy and you fight our battles for us. We never fight alone when we trust in you, God. Help us, Heavenly Father, we pray, to remember that you are bigger, you are stronger, you are more powerful than the enemy, more powerful than anything that we may face. Help us, Heavenly Father, to remember that. And Holy Spirit, we pray that you help us to always put our trust in the Lord. May we not put our trust in other things heavenly father or other people but always trusting you god looking up to you heavenly father for you are our help you are the one we can trust in always in jesus name we pray amen Father Almighty God, we thank you that 
you fight our battles for us, Heavenly Father. We never stand in our own strength when we trust in you, Almighty God. When we trust in you, we stand in your strength, Almighty God. And you can overcome all things, Heavenly Father, for you are all powerful. We thank you, Almighty God, for the power that you give us. Help us, Heavenly Father, to trust in you and in you alone. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, 1982, your second challenge today is a kingdom eating game. And we want to see who can eat all of their Smarties first. But your Smarties have to be covered in whipped cream. Uh, do you understand 1982? Yes. Okay, let's set the game up. All right, Kingdom Kids, they've got to put their smarty buttons in the plate. How many are you having each, 1982? Seven. Seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven buttons each, and now they're going to cover them with cream so they're not going to be able to see them, Kingdom Kids. Okay, let's cover them with cream. 19's going to go first. Good amount of cream, 19. Don't want to see any of those buttons. And now 82. Come on, 82. Hide all of your buttons under that cream. There we go. Who likes whipped cream? Mm, not me. Okay, there we go, 1982. And there's no timer. We just want to see who's going to be the first one to eat all of their Smarty Buttons first. Remember, 1982, this game, you can't use your hands. <laughs> all right, are you ready? Yeah. Let's yeah. go. Okay, Kingdom Kids, they've got to eat all seven of their buttons without using their hands, and we want to see who's eating them all first. Remember, Kingdom Kids, keep watching and keep counting. See how many they've eaten. If every time they've eaten one, you mark it off. Remember, they've got to eat seven in total. Keep going, 1982. We want to see who's going to be the first one to eat all of those buttons. I think this game all depends on how much you actually like eating whipped cream. If you love whipped cream, you'll love this game. Come on 1982, there's no timer, just be as quick as you can. We want to see who's going to be the first one to eat all their buttons. Yum, yum, yum. Kingdom Kids, keep watching, keep focused, keep sharing, keep supporting your team. Are you team 19 or are you team 82? Remember Kingdom Kids, it's all down to you. You decide. Come on, 1982, who's going to be the first one to finish these buttons? Last week we had donut eating challenge, this week it's buttons. And I think the race is on. They're racing to the end, Kingdom Kids. Keep going, 1982. We want it, all of those buttons eaten, all seven. We want a complete finished plate. Is it going to be 19 or is it going to be 82 or is it going to be 82 or is it going to be 19? Let's give them a countdown, Kingdom Kids. Five, four, three, woo, woo, woo! Kingdom Kids, it's all down to you. You decide who the winner is. Was it 19 or was it 82? It's all down to you. You oh decide. My God. Oh my God. <laughs> Why don't you try this game at home with your family? And also try and face palming your parents with some whipped cream. I've been 19. And I'm 82. And, and we're, we're out. out. Kingdom Kids, we gained so much knowledge today, didn't we? We learned to only trust in God because he's the only one we need. And he never fails us. We should always put our trust in God because with him, we can get through any problems we're having and come out victorious. Look how Saul told David he could not defeat Goliath because he was young. But David trusted in God and he was victorious. I had so much fun learning with you guys. I'll see you soon. Bye.